Hello everyone and welcome to worship at St Mark's Anglican Parish in Warwick. Today we celebrate Maundy Thursday together. You might be able to hear an occasional truck or some traffic noise behind me. Please do disregard that. We are doing our level best to mitigate that. The Lord be with you. Our sentence for the day comes from John's Gospel. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others, as he was the servant of all, who gave his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, if you would like to, you can pause the clip. The first hymn chosen today is A New Commandment, together in Psalm 699. And now our time for confession. Would you turn to your booklets? God showed great love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith. O oh God, you have searched us out and known us, and all that we are is open to you. We confess that we have sinned. We have used our power to dominate and our weakness to manipulate. We have evaded our responsibility and failed to confront evil. We have denied dignity to ourselves and to each other and fallen into despair. We turn to you, O oh God. We renounce evil. We claim your love. We choose to be made whole. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we come to our Bible readings for today. You'll see that our focus reading is passage from John's Gospel chapter 13. So if you'd like to turn to that one now and pause the clip so you can read that in your own time. And now our reflection. An occupied people, a physical hunger, the desire for freedom and the turning toward a spiritual purpose. This past week I finally got to see a film that I've wanted to see for a while the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society. It is 1941 at the beginning of the film and the people of the island of Guernsey in the English Channel have been occupied by Nazi Germany. A group of locals drawn together by one of those remarkable friends in common types, a girl with a heart full of love, meet in defiance of the curfew. They're hungry and the opening scenes centre on a hidden banquet to which each invited guest must bring a part of the meal, the joint of roast meat, the greens, the homemade gin, and finally the offering from the elderly postmaster, a pie made solely from potato peels, which is truly awful. The gathered group has to fabricate a book club to get around the breach of curfew, but as they start to meet regularly, discussing and debating some wonderful books, sharing ideas and the dreadful potato peel pie, Something they didn't bargain on happens. What has begun as a need for sustenance develops into something that is truly rich and satisfying. A deep and lasting friendship that sustains them beyond betrayal, suffering and death. An occupied people, a physical hunger, the desire for freedom and the turning toward a spiritual purpose. These are themes in Exodus and in the Gospels too. It's interesting that stories including bread are present at the start of Lent and now near the end of Holy Week. It's not a chronological thing exactly. Jesus' temptations in the wilderness don't, of course, occur a neat six weeks before Holy Week. There are a couple of years between the temptation to turn the stones into bread and the breaking of bread at the Passover just before his death. These stories are arranged in our lectionary for theological purposes. So what might we draw from them? 
Satan's temptation is about the misuse of power, about solving the physical hunger of the world with a magic trick. It's about compartmentalising life, shearing off bodily from spiritual needs, as if one is more important than the other. Jesus responds, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Does that mean that Jesus is careless of the bodily requirements of humanity, a kind of spiritual athlete who pits body against soul? I don't think so. Taking a big step back in time to the time of the Egyptian exodus, God attends to the people's need for sustenance. Moses has very specific instructions on how to prepare the journey and what to eat. They are fed, and as they travel, they are sustained even in the desert when food and water are uncertain. The need for bread and wine and the other elements of the symbolic meal sacred to the Jewish people show us that God doesn't compartmentalise life. It is all part of a sacred whole, the heart, the mind, body and soul. When Jesus celebrates Passover with his friends, he is attending to the spiritual, the physical hunger rather, but also acknowledging the desire for freedom. Freedom from all that denies us life. And also acknowledging the spiritual longing for purpose to deepen our shared life through relationship. I think we like to put life in compartments, but what potato peel pie what Exodus and what the beginning and the end of Lent and Holy Week are showing us is that you can't. Body, mind, heart and soul are part of a whole. There's a quote from American writer Ursula Le Guin that goes, Love doesn't just sit there like a stone. It has to be made and remade new, like bread. Jesus does exactly this. He hosts this final meal, bringing his friends together in an act of normality and sanity as the net closes around him. He serves at this meal, telling them to do likewise, to wash the feet of others, to care for others, body and soul. His actions aren't fractured. They are holistic and healing. He doesn't give Peter the silent treatment or give Judas the rounds of the kitchen table. He breaks bread with all his followers and he tells them, never stop taking time together. Never stop breaking bread together, gathering, remembering, attending to the physical needs and feeding the spiritual longing. There is a history as long as humanity and sharpened by faith that something happens when we come together to eat something that is fundamentally important, not just to feed our bodies or supply memories to fill photo albums or Facebook, not just to learn social skills or argue over politics. Hospitality requires us to think of another, to provide for another. Hospitality with an open heart, listening to the story of another in all its pain and through all its joys, offers the possibility of transformation, leading us mutually to understanding, forgiveness and to love. This Thursday meal is as love is, more than a sum of its parts. It is more than the feeding of the body. It is about nurturing the soul, a gathering of all people, a physical hunger, the desire for freedom and the turning toward a spiritual purpose the ultimate spiritual purpose, to love as we are loved. Amen. Now we return to our worship booklet. We take time to affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please pause the clip now so that you can do that in your gathered group or as you're worshipping on You might like to choose a second hymn as a way of reflecting as we prepare for prayers today. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please pause the clip now so that you might take time to pray. And now our blessing and dismissal. As we prepare for the solemn services of Good Friday, we hold hands if we are worshipping with others. We know that we are always held in the hands of God. Let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs>